Hi, I'm uh, Kevin D. Welcome back to another episode of Evergoods TV. Uh, thanks to those of you who joined us last time when we talked about DWR zipper treatment on Evergoods products. Uh, today we're going to talk about foam. Uh, why would we spend time talking about foam? As it relates to sewn goods, foam is often largely unseen. Uh, it's usually inside of a sewn construction. It's not a material that the user, that the customer usually sees or comes into direct contact with. Um, I think because of this reason, it's often also a place where companies save a lot of money and use very inexpensive foams. Uh, in terms of foam, I would say that the market at large is generally inexpensive or, or almost at a commodity level. Uh, that, that meaning that it's, it's fairly unspecialized and, and low cost and high volume. Uh, you can think of things like uh, disposable packaging, maybe like furniture cushions, filtration. Uh, these things are just sort of inexpensive commodities. Uh, one of the troubles that this introduces for Evergoods is that we do all of our uh, product development in-house. Uh, so when we use a foam here in a construction, we want to we wanna understand how the harness feels, how it fits, how something stretches or moves. Uh, so if I call a local distributor here and ask for a two pound cross-link polyethylene foam, I can get that foam. If I call another distributor on the East Coast and ask for the same thing, they'll send it, but it, it's slightly different. And then if we go to our factory partners um, in Asia and ask for that same thing, they will source it as well, but it's going to be slightly different. Uh, so these inconsistencies make it difficult to develop in-house and have a really confident understanding of, of exactly what the product is, how it feels, how it fits, how it moves. Um, one way that we get around that is that we buy foams from, uh, from a high-end foam supplier called Zote Foams. Uh, high-end foams exist. They're for engineering and robotics applications, medical industry, aerospace, um, or, or any industry that needs a, a really high-quality, consistent product. Um, so this is one of our shoulder strap foams. It's, uh, it's from Zote Foams. It's EV50. Um, I call our distributor, I order EV50, we laser cut it into this shape. Um, when we go to production, our, our partner in Vietnam calls their distributor, they order Zote EV50 and it is exactly this material. Um, so that's great. I also mentioned that um, these foams are high quality. Well, what does high quality mean? I think to understand foam quality, we need to look at what makes up foam. Um, foam is basically a, either a, a liquid or a solid with gas bubbles in it. Um, so this is going to be regular foam over here, and this will be uh, Zote foam that Evergoods uses over here. Uh, so it's a, it's a, in terms of foam rubber, like we're talking about, it's a, it's a solid and a gas. So what is that solid? Um, in our case, EV50 is an EVA, it's an ethyl vinyl acetate. Um, this is a, a fairly rubbery foam. It's commonly found in like uh, running shoe soles. That squishy, kind of reboundy, uh, nice foam. Of course, EVA has a, has a lot of different mixes, um, and, and Zote foam spends a lot of time and attention really dialing in the chemical makeup of the solid uh, for each of their foams. So the, the EVA is, uh, is very consistent from the rubber standpoint. Um, other foams, they can be EVA or they can be who knows what, low density polyethylene, other olefins, um, all kinds of different things could be a foam, but you just oftentimes don't know exactly what you're getting. Um, so that's, a, that's the solid portion. The next portion that I mentioned was gas. Um, so there are little bubbles, of course, inside this foam. Um, the, the thing about, one thing that Zote foam works really hard to control is uh, is the bubble size in their foam. The bubbles are extremely small, and they're also very evenly distributed throughout the foam. Um, other foams might have small bubbles, they might have some bigger bubbles, maybe there's more bubbles in one area. They're just not as consistent on cross-section. Um, Another thing to talk about in regards to gas is what is them could have gas that's just ambient air. It could be anything. Um, Zote foam uses nitrogen gas. They use nitrogen because it's inert. Uh, nitrogen's found a lot in food in the food industry, food processing. Like when, when you open a potato chip bag that's got air in it, 
It doesn't just air, the chips would go stale. They put nitrogen in those bags to keep the chips fresh. The nitrogen is inert. So inside this foam over years and years and years, there's nothing in the, in the gas makeup of the, chemical makeup of the foam that's gonna cause it to, to degrade prematurely. Um, a foam that just has air in it, maybe it's fine. Maybe there's some interaction with the air and the rubber that over time will be damaging or degrading. Uh, the other thing about this consistency in, in pore size and also distribution is that it makes the foam just like, like really even, obviously, throughout, throughout the whole material is, is super consistent. So why does this matter? I would say that when foam starts, starts taking force and having to buffer and cushion, you know, there's sort of like uh, it's the, the weakest link. The chain is only as strong as its weakest link. Uh, so if there's an area of this foam that's got maybe slightly larger bubbles or maybe more bubbles, maybe as this takes force, it, you know, maybe it starts to fail right there and then maybe it fails again right here and then, and then eventually these join and split and this foam fails. Um, a foam that's really consistent in pore size and, and bubble distribution uh, takes, takes all the variety of forces evenly and distributes it throughout the foam evenly. So there, if the foam is going to fail, it's because it's you've maxed it out, but there's not like a, a weak point. Um, so all of these things make this foam high quality. And as I mentioned, the fact that it's globally available means that we can work with it in-house and our factories can put the same thing in the product that you purchase. Um, this is why it, it's more expensive, but it's also the material that we want to use for our product that we want you to use on your backpack. Um, recently, Jack sent out uh, an update to our, Kickstarter, our last Kickstarter backers. Um, there's been a, a delay in our production because of a shortage of one of these Zote foams. Uh, delivery to the factory is, is a little delayed, and so our product is a little delayed. We apologize for that. That's unfortunate. But here at Evergoods, we are not going to cut corners in our raw materials or our production. We want to deliver the highest quality product we can to our customers. And unfortunately, sometimes there are delays. So thanks for everybody for sticking with us and hanging in there. Thanks to all of you that watched this video. And we'll do another one next month.